Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for joining me today. A deceitful or true heart is the title of this devotion. You may think that that is something that you don't have to concern you about, concern yourself about. However, the Bible shows us differently. The Bible shows us that we do um, have a choice what kind of heart we have. We have a choice what kind of heart we have. And that has everything to do with what we give ourselves to. If we give ourselves over to relying, depending on God, He gives us a true heart. If we refuse to give ourselves over to God, naturally we will eventually discover that we have a deceitful heart that our own heart will deprive us, our own heart will lead us astray, our own heart will teach us or show us things that aren't always true. You can believe something in your heart that isn't true. However, the Bible says, as a man believes in his heart, so is he. So what kind of heart we have is very important, I would think. And one of the famous scriptures is Jeremiah chapter 17. And I want to read you verse 7 through 10, okay? It's a phenomenal chapter. Jeremiah 17, I want to encourage you to read the whole chapter. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind, even to give every man according to his way, ways, according to the fruit of his doings. And you could see, let me read it again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. The word mind here is the word kidneys. And the reason the original text uses kidneys is because it's where the dialysis takes place. It's where your inclination and motivation comes from inwardly. The nature that motivates you comes out of your kidneys. And that's an interesting thinking. In the Old Testament, they had to offer the kidneys separate from everything else they offered to God. And you see the Lord tests the kidneys. In other words, what, when it comes down to it, which way would you choose? When it comes down to it, do you choose to trust in the Lord? To make Him, Himself, your hope? So, okay, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I place myself fully in your hands. You see, this is where you turn from having a deceitful heart to having a true heart. A man who relies on his own heart will always seek his own way, but a man who relies on the Lord will always seek his way. David, in his famous Psalm 139, said in the last two verses, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. That little statement right there means more to your Heavenly Father than you can imagine when you invite Him to search your heart. It's not that God doesn't know your heart and needs to search it to know it. No, He knows your heart. But the experience of God's Spirit coming to your heart and testing your motivation, your inclination, is to make you manifest in who you really are. Are you a person who can be relied upon, depended upon? A man who, a woman who can be built upon? 
Or are you sinking sand? Yeah, you, you promise everything, but when it comes down to it, you deliver almost nothing. And you see these characteristics are quite common in the world that doesn't have to be Christian for those characteristics to be appreciated one way or another. In other words, people may not have any fear of God, but they still respect it if somebody's reliable, if somebody's dependable, if somebody's trustworthy. And no matter how corrupt people's ways may be, it still makes a difference when you have a faithful person, a loyal person, a reliable person. It makes a difference. And if it makes a difference to people, how much more to your Heavenly Father? And the honesty, the uprightness, the sincerity of heart that says, search me, O God, then know my heart, try me, and know my anxieties, what causes me to get under stress and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. You see, you, you could say, Father, please know my heart, and if there's anything that's not right in it, please help me deal with it, Lord. I don't want to go my own way. I want to do it your way. I want to do what's right in your sight. You see, that means a lot to the Heavenly Father. It really means more to him than you can imagine. And I don't think that this is just something you do once in a lifetime. No, you do this daily. Daily you bear your heart before the Heavenly Father. Daily you let him try your anxieties and test your motivations. And daily it shows that you've chosen to go his way, not your way. And and. You know, there are times, though, in our lives when the Lord has been patient with you and me. And He has been pulling on us and pulling on us, but we have maybe yielded only little because we're spiritually lazy. We want to wanna have a break, we want to watch TV, we want to do other things. So, you know, we, our investment in our own heart hasn't been that, that much. And then all of a sudden the Lord goes, okay, now it's time. Now it's time. You know, it's kind of like the land. The land has been harvested and it lays there. It lays there. And the farmer can say, oh, darling, the time has come. We've got to prepare for the next, the next increase. I know we've just harvested enough, just put everything in. And now I've got to go out again, but I know so it is. Here we go and he puts in the plow, and he breaks up that fallow ground, and he prepares it for a new harvest. He cannot just live off of last year's harvest. He's got to have a fresh harvest every year, and often more than once a year, depending on what kind of harvest he's looking for. And the Lord is looking at you and say, I know, you say, but Father, I experience your power here. Father, I had the revelation there. Father, you spoke to me there. Father, you made that clear and gave me a breakthrough there. And the Father says, I know, but I have more, I have much more. And then the scripture says here in verse 12 of Hosea chapter 10, sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fellow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. And I love that scripture here in Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. How our own heart needs constant cultivating. Constant cultivating. And, you know, it's, it's like we bought a house, Virginia and I, we bought a little bungalow that had an absolute beautiful garden. Beautiful garden with all these beautiful flowers and everything. And, and we hadn't really done that kind of work very much, very little. And weeds came, they just came, they just came. I mean, I didn't ask them, I didn't plant them, I didn't sow them, and they just arrived, these weeds. And, and then it got really bad. And Virginia looked at it, she says, darling, we gotta do something. I said, oh, please, let's just sell the house and buy another house with a beautiful garden. And she looked at me like, no. <laughs> she said, like, are you mad or something? No. She says, we got to do something. I said, oh, I don't want to. Let's just sell and buy something else with a nice garden. She said, what do you think will happen with that garden? 
And that's the silliness of people changing relationships sometimes, that they think if they have a new relationship, they're not going to have the same challenges. That's silly. Well, I didn't, I wasn't in the mood, folks. I mean, I know this is terrible. And here I'm seeing my dear little wife on her knees, picking up all the, pulling out all the weeds and plowing up that ground and she embarrassed me. And I thought, that's not happening. We're not gonna have my dear wife doing all the donkey work in here. Jesus said, he who is the, the greatest is the least, is the servant. So I thought, no, this is not happening. <laughs> so I got in there and I started working. And now after some years, it's a beautiful garden. I enjoy it and I go out there and keep it clean and we do it together and we're, you know, it's really enhanced our friendship in our marriage. But you got to keep the weeds out of your own heart. And that, you got to keep your heart clean and you got to keep your heart pure. You know, there's this amazing scripture here in, in Ethan's, I think this is Ethan. Let me see if this is, Ethan's Psalm, Psalm 78. Oh, I love these Psalms. No, this is the sons of Asaph. Ethan, I think, is Psalm 92. But here, if you look at verse 5 from Psalm 78, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they would arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments and may not be like their father, stubborn and rebellious generation, that a generation that did not set its heart aright, and whose spirit was not faithful to God. You see, faithfulness is not an automatic, it's something you have to cultivate on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you don't keep the weeds out, and if you don't keep cleaning out the rubbish out of your own heart, irritations, frustrations, negative feelings, angers, and, and, and uh, loneliness and emptiness and whatever, if you don't keep it clean in there, in your own heart and mind, before you know it, you're gonna become rebellious. In other words, you're gonna go against God's will for your own life and for your own home and own family because they did not set their hearts aright. Therefore, they were not faithful to God. I wanna encourage you to be somebody who daily sets your heart aright. Daily you go before the Lord in prayer and read His Word and say thank you for creating in me a clean heart by your Holy Spirit and your loving cleansing flood of your blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for washing me white as snow in my heart and my mind. Thank you for giving me a true heart, a true heart. You know, it says in Hebrews 10, that because of the sacrifice Christ has paid, He gives us a true heart in Hebrews 10, 22, and sincere faith, because He sprinkles our heart from an evil conscience. Sprinkles speaks about the blood, cleansing your heart from evil thought, thinkings, meditations, accusations, irritations, frustrations, thoughts that just come into your heart because your heart is, is a dumping ground of rubbish. No, my heart is not a dumping ground of rubbish. No, I meditate on the word of the Lord in my heart and in my mind day and night. And so I will not allow my heart to be a place where evil thoughts can just come. Peter said to Ananias and Sapphira, how can you have allowed Satan to put the thought in your heart? You see, unless you guard your heart, and we'll talk about that this week, the enemy will just come and give you all kinds of thoughts in your heart and you, you'll be, don't clean that out and that's what you're going to start believing and before you know it, it's going to influence your, your, your actions. You see, what you believe is what will determine what you say and what you do. That's why we've got to keep ourselves. And I pray today that your heart's not deceitful but true because you've given it to God and He keeps it clean by His Spirit and blood and word and love and life so that good thoughts proceed from your heart. Jesus said, a good man under the good treasure of his heart 
brings forth good things. Luke chapter 6, verse 40 or something like that. I want to encourage you, have a good heart. Be a man or a woman of a good heart, good thoughts, good ideas, benevolence, kindness, generosity, forbearance, patience, graciousness, positiveness, happiness. That all proceeds from the heart. Let good thoughts proceed from your heart day and night. Keep your heart clean. Don't allow your heart to get mucked up and then you have all kinds of anger coming out of it. Please, give God your heart and He will make it white as snow and you will be so happy because out of your heart, Jesus said in John 7, 38, a river of His life will flow. Amen. Have a good day.